and hello welcome everyone to this video uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more okay let me bring the mic a little bit closer yeah I'm going to talk a bit more about TFS uh, the transfer function estimation so last video I told you that all you need to do to basically use TFS is to have this have some uh, data some relevant data the number of poles you want the number of zeros you want and if you want uh, input output delay and these are the basic ways to do it okay of course you can specify uh, the way this transfer function estimation works using these options but I'll not talk about it now so today I want to talk straight about how you get this data because last video I was saying okay uh, this data is basically loaded from MATLAB but you need to have a way of making your own data how do you how do you have your own data so um, we're going to discuss that okay so first let's look at what uh, what's the data object that you need so we're going to this is on MATLAB and this is on MATLAB and, uh, and if you just click the data okay uh, here you have data this is estimation data which you need it is it is specified as an ID data object an FRD object or ID FRD object Okay, what what are these things okay so um, so ID data is a, f a, a data object file containing input and output signal values in the time domain meaning to say if you have a step response and then uh, you have you have very clear sine waves up and down you can use these ones okay um, otherwise for frequency domain estimation okay you you can actually uh, use a few things you can use the ID data also which I guess is more um, more uh, versatile or you can use the ID FRD which uses this control system toolbox now I happen to use this one okay rather than the ID data because the uh, ID, ID data does look a little bit more complex but I mean should if you take some time to figure it out it shouldn't be too hard but just for this video, I use the ID FRD object because I mean I, that's how I happen to figure it out. All right, um, and this this allows you to actually put in some if you wanted a transfer function using this SYS, okay? SYS, a linear system dynamic model. Okay, this one is a lot nicer to use if you use the the, the transfer function kind of uh, way. Okay, so. Um, let, let's uh, let's see how this is done okay the the only thing you need to do okay to pay attention to is this line over here or rather let's see you you have these lines over here your first uh, your first thing you need is a response data then you need frequency then you need TS TS okay what is this what is all of this uh, we can actually take a look okay Okay, go all the way to the bottom. Ah, where is it? Okay. All right, here, here it is. Okay, if you want to create an IDFRD model that encapsulates frequency response data taken at certain frequencies using sample time TS. Okay, so TS is a sample time. Means every how many seconds do you take a sample? This is one over the sampling frequency. Okay, so that's very important for you uh, for this to know if you want to do it in the frequency domain. So that means after you do all your Fourier transforms, everything, uh, you'll need this. Okay, so um, you have a response data, you have the frequency array and TS. So TS already explained. Let's take a look at what, uh, how do we put in the response data and uh, frequency. Okay, frequency is very straightforward. It's a frequency points corresponding to response data. So you need to specify a column vector. Okay, column vector. All right. So that's uh, that's what you want to do. You basically have a column vector. So let's just uh, write this all down quickly. Uh, okay, maybe yeah, that's too straightforward. Maybe I won't write it down. Okay, so. Uh, frequency frequency is a column vector okay then what is response data okay frequency response data is this 
uh, specified as a 3D array of complex numbers. Oh, okay. So what is 3D? Okay, um, for single out input, single output systems, uh, response data is a vector of frequency response value, uh, values at the frequency points specified in the frequency properties. Okay, so what is the CISO system? It's a single input, single output. Okay, That means uh, if you just want a single input, single output transfer function, it's very simple. You just need uh, one vector of complex numbers and one vector of frequency points. And the complex numbers will have all your gain and phase data uh, inside it. Uh, I would have explained how you got those complex numbers before in the Fourier transform and basically these complex numbers come about because your Fourier transform has imaginary numbers and real numbers and uh, the complex numbers actually tell you the phase, the, mag the magnitude of those complex numbers will tell you the well, magnitude, how big is the amplitude of the sine wave okay so yeah, so uh, for si single output, si single input, single output, uh, response data is a, a vector of frequency response values. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do only the basic. We'll, we'll just touch on single input, single output. For multiple input, multiple output, yeah, there's so many pieces of data, you probably need a 3D array, but we're not going to touch that. Okay, so um, yeah, how, how is this going to look? Yeah. Okay, so let's take for example you have yeah. hmm. Okay, so let's say uh, let's say we just have this piece of data. Okay, it's called uh this one is uh, under the estimate transfer function is one of the examples. So I have to assume first that you have already done your Fourier transform, you did your you have a uh, you have a column of uh, frequencies and a, a column of uh, yeah, you have a column of frequencies and a column or a column vector of uh, what do you call that? Uh, the response, which is these complex numbers. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah. So let's walk. So let's walk through this example. Okay, I'm just going to uh, load this up in MATLAB. Okay. See, uh, whoops. And let's do a CLC here. And I'm going to clear. Clear. Okay, so I'm going to load these two. Okay, what's F? Okay, F is a column of some frequencies here. You can see. And FRF. FRF is this uh, column vector of all the uh, response. Okay, so this is ideally, if you have a CSV file or something, you should have these two column vectors. One about frequency the other about the response the response will be again complex numbers okay so um, yes what the what this permute thing is okay so permute basically is just a, a rearrangement of the whole array okay it's a it's a rearrangement of this whole array so um, Let's say let's say you have uh, a. Okay, you you have a random number generator. You actually make a a matrix, a three D matrix. Okay, okay, three D matrix. Uh, so this is the first level, so to speak, and this is the second level. Okay, um, if you want to uh change how this matrix works, you 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 reorder the elements of this 3d matrix you use this uh, thing called permute so all you're doing here is to just uh, reorder the matrix okay so um well technically speaking uh, let's let's see let's see what this permute thing does before we load it into the idfrd okay all right so um yeah, basically, let's see. Yeah, so uh, this all this does is to create a three, three D matrix. Okay, you can see. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm I'm look I'm checking out this permute thing over here. No, I don't know whether you really need that. Uh, but. Hmm. 
Yeah, but this is a 3D 3D matrix, okay? Um, yeah, this is a 3D 3D matrix. Um, the the column, yeah, the 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 x coordinate so the three is uh, just one. The y coordinate is one. So you see a one by one by two zero one complex double. So there's only one uh one cell in the x coordinate one or oh, one element in the x coordinate one element in the y coordinate, right? Uh, you know it's it's just a uh, it's just a uh, yeah two hundred and one elements. Okay, this is just a uh, rearrangement. Uh, okay, if if you want to explain it like that, okay, two three four five. If this is the row vector, okay, uh, in the x direction, okay, this permute all it does is to just rearrange it. Two, three, four, five. So this is the x direction, but what uh what this permute does is to change this uh column vector into this, and and this becomes the z direction kind of thing so two three four five increasing z but this is increasing x so this is all that the permute function here is doing but in essence you still have one column of uh, uh, vectors in one column vector in the z direction one column vector in the uh, x direction if you want to think about it that way okay so I'm gonna try I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try the IDFRD Okay, G equals to I D F R D. I'm not going to do the permute, I'm just going to do F R F F zero. Now what are these what are these three things here? Okay, this is your frequency response data. Of course you, you basically just rearrange this whole thing to to shift the shift the uh, vector upwards. Okay, this is the the frequencies that you have and zero is your sampling time. Normally uh, I Normally, if you were to take real frequency response data, you will have finite sampling time uh, in real life. Okay, but this is an ideal case, so I'm not going to do anything. Now, from the last last two things over here, this one is actually quite obvious, but uh, it's very important. Okay, uh, so it's, it's specifying that the frequency unit should be in hertz. Okay, again, the frequency unit should be in hertz. So if your frequency response data is going to be in hertz, you should specify that it's going to be in hertz or else MATLAB will be confused and then you'll think it's in radians per second. So yeah, um, one very important thing to take note is always mine your units. Okay, mine your units. So I'm going to just put this here and let's see what happens. Okay, G will come out as uh, one I, uh, IDFRD data and let's see whether it works without this permute thingy. Okay, let's test the... let's see the body magnitude plots okay it looks like looks like your body diagrams are pretty much the same as what you get here you can see it's pretty much okay this uh, this is the body plot and this is the body plot here I, I did not use the the permute thing in uh, any way because that's like okay at least in a one input one output system is a very redundant thing ID FRD will just figure everything out for you okay so uh yeah so how what what did we just do here okay i copy and paste i copied and pasted things very fast okay we created an idfrd object okay idfrd is your frequency response data object okay and that's done using one column of uh, frequency response remember we we had this uh, complex number thing uh, this complex number thing Okay, so all we did was to specify, you know, we have a complex uh, column vector of uh, frequency response data for single input, single output. We have a uh, frequency uh, array, array or frequency vector. Again, another column vector. You don't need to use this permute thing. We specify the sampling time and we specify the frequency unit to be hertz. So that's all we need to do to make this IDFRD data. And once we are done with this IDFRD data, we use TFS. Okay, so this was the MATLAB example how you use this uh, TFS. So um, TFS. Okay. Okay. So we we specify G as our IDFRD data. 
and then we have 32 poles and 32 zeros and here we go it's a very very long transfer function as expected 32 can imagine yeah so uh, a very very long uh, transfer function if you want the, the pole again pole of the system okay we have some unstable poles some stable poles okay we have a uh, generally if you have a step response to this system it will be very unstable as you can see here okay but uh, what what I'm what I'm trying to say here is okay um, if we have one column vector of um, uh, complex numbers from our Fourier transform or frequency response and one column vector of our, our frequencies we can use that to basically estimate the transfer function by creating this ID FRD object first in the way I just described you you put your your um, frequency response data in your first input your frequency in your second input your sampling in your third input and your fourth and fifth, fifth input will be your frequency unit and uh, your frequency units to be specified in Hertz okay so this is this is how you make your data and once you make your data you can uh, you can do your TFS very easily so hopefully this this clears up clears up how how this uh, data object is being done the the ID FRD data object and um, yeah basically it's uh, is to show you like mm, it's, it's not that uh, not that I mean uh, at first it may seem confusing but it's not that hard okay so uh, thanks for watching so if you have your own frequency response data make sure you have two column vectors you have your sampling time then you just make your specify your frequency unit I like to put it in Hertz so I just leave it as Hertz okay once you do that then you can use your transfer function estimation very easily so okay that's that's uh that's going through the MATLAB example over here and I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.